Hi, welcome back. My name is Carlos, and today we have both the privilege and the honor of having Dr. Rudy here with us. Doc, thank you so much for being here with us today. Carlos, I'm excited to be here. Today we're gonna to talk about something really important. It's about testosterone deficiency or low T syndrome. And a lot of guys are suffering from this, but there's still a lot of questions and misconceptions. So we're gonna help alleviate a lot of those fears today. Yes, and we thought that the best way to sort of address the concerns around safety and efficacy was to rely on the science. And so what better way than to rely on the international expert consensus resolution that was published in 2015 by the Mayo Clinic. We thought that we were gonna go through the statements one by one, have Doc's uh, interpretation of, of the statements so that we can bring it home for you. That's great, Carlos. Many people are not even aware of this consensus. It was done in 2015, and it was about 18 doctors, scientists, including urologists, diabetologists, internal medicine docs. They reviewed all the evidence that was available, and they came up with nine statements that we're gonna to read today about testosterone deficiency and testosterone therapy. Yes, so let's get right to it. I have my little book here. So the first statement, Doc, is uh, testosterone deficiency is a well-established clinically significant medical condition that negatively affects male sexuality, reproduction, general health, and quality of life. Exactly, so low T is a true syndrome. Testosterone deficiency does affect men negatively. And it's not just the way they look or feel, it does affect their life. You know, there's a high risk of diabetes, high risk of cardiovascular disease, even a high risk of all-cause mortality. Again, backed up by the Mayo Clinic. Yes. The second statement, symptoms and signs of testosterone deficiency occur as a result of low testosterone levels and may benefit from treatment regardless of whether there is an identified underlying cause. Again, another important statement. So when we assess those patients at the clinic and we see that they meet criteria for low testosterone, low T or testosterone deficiency, we may not have a cause, but we know we can help you. Yeah, and it may not be about the number, right? You know, a lot, of, a lot of people get focused on the actual number on a lab, and I think that's one of the cardinal mistakes that people end up treating a lab rather than the patient. Completely, and there is a statement regarding this. Yeah, and this one's one of my personal favorites. Testosterone deficiency is a global public health concern. I that mean, is a little scary. It is not just in the US. It is not a first world problem. This has been, ex men are experiencing this all over the world. A lot of times they don't know what's going on with them. They just know they don't feel well. Yeah, and it's like almost like an epidemic nowadays. Uh, this is a, a, also one of my personal favorites and one of the ones that kind of sold me on pursuing and, and really digging into testosterone uh, replacement and is that testosterone therapy for men is both effective, rational, and evidence-based. I love the evidence-based. As a physician, that's what I want. I know I can make guys feel better. Now it is evidence-based. Number five, there is no testosterone concentration threshold that reliably distinguishes those who will respond to treatment from those who will not. So that goes again to your point you were making, it is not a number. Right. So it is a clinical syndrome. So you look at the patient's symptoms and you look at the number and you put those two together. But there is not a reliable number. So you cannot say that if you are 305, you don't meet criteria. If you're 295, you do meet criteria. Correct. So again, backed by science. Yeah. And listening to the patient, you know, a lot of, you know, you can have almost identical biochemistries and wildly different symptoms. I, you know, that's, a, that's another thing that we see a lot. Number six, there is no scientific basis for any age-specific recommendation against the use of testosterone therapy in men. So yeah, Doc, what is your take on this pattern that we're seeing of younger and younger men suffering from this condition? Yeah, that, that's really important, Carlos. Remember, when I started practicing and, and doing testosterone replacement therapy, most of my patients were in their 40s and up, 45, 55. Now, in our practice, we're seeing about 30% of the patients who are less than 40. We've even seen 20-year-olds. And I'm actually glad to see that finally, uh, the University of Miami, where I got my medical degree, by the way, I'm a cane, um, they finally published a study where it showed that about 20% of adolescents and young adult men are suffering from testosterone deficiency. Wow. So imagine this, you're in your 20s and you feel like this? 
And now you go to your doctor and they don't understand this. We get those calls every day. And they tell you it's all in your head, they probably give you an SSRI, antidepressant and all that. Unfortunately, so it, it is tough. And you know, one thing, we're not gonna expand on this today. It is a toxic environment. All those endocrine disrupting chemicals that are just killing our sex drive, killing our numbers, no. causing infertility. So- Raising our I, estrogen. I, look, I, I wanna tell th those guys, we get you, we feel for you, and we can be there to help you. So yes, we see that pattern. Uh, we help patients a lot with this. And, and unfortunately, it's only gonna get worse, but there is an answer to it. Great. The evidence does not support increased risks of cardiovascular events with testosterone therapy. This is one of the ones I have to talk to my patients a lot because there is still a black box warning on testosterone by the FDA that it, that it may cause adverse cardiovascular events, heart attacks. So again, Mayo Clinic says it, there is no evidence for it. And since 2015, there's been a lot more studies that first show that low testosterone increases the risk of cardiovascular disease and replacing testosterone the right way decreases the chance of adverse cardiovascular events. Yeah, that's really powerful. Um, number eight, the evidence supports a major research initiative to explore possible benefits of testosterone therapy for cardiometabolic disease, including diabetes. So this is a lot of the patients that we see that meet criteria for the metabolic syndrome, meaning they have insulin resistance, their blood pressure is a little high, their cholesterol is not great, and they have an increased waist size, belly fat. So those patients meet criteria for metabolic syndrome, which increases your risk of diabetes and increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. Again, there's a lot of research, again, backed by Mayo Clinic, that testosterone helps with improvement of those cardiometabolic factors. Yeah. And uh, the last one, and this is a big one, you know, a lot of guys have concern for this. The evidence does not support increased risk of prostate cancer with testosterone therapy. That says it all. This is a big fear that both, again, patients, even physicians who are considering putting patients on testosterone therapy still have the confirmation bias, the old school thinking that testosterone causes prostate cancer. Please, don't take it from me. Go and read those statements. Go and look at the evidence. Testosterone is not associated with an increased risk of prostate cancer. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, it's it, this is really important for people watching that not only we're basing ourselves on science and, and evidence, um, but it, it's even more importantly because nowadays, you know, you see a lot of advertisement in this industry, right? And and most of the advertisement that guys get bombarded with is, is all about, you know, guys with six packs and bulging muscles and about, you know, sexual performance. And yes, those things will improve, but those are just sort of like fringe benefits, right? For me, um, and, and I think this, this is one of the things that you, you taught me, was that testosterone is, is a powerful medication for the brain. Your brain is filled with androgen receptors and so once your testosterone levels dip below a certain threshold, those receptors in your mind begin to become starved and malnourished. This is definitely one of the benefits of testosterone that is not being talked about enough. So testosterone is not just to give you big muscles or to give you have better sex, uh, stronger erections. Those are great, but it's not the only thing. For sure, what testosterone does, it increases the release of serotonin and dopamine in your brain. So that's why patients with low testosterone, many times their symptoms are that they, descri they describe low mood, a decreased quality of life. They don't enjoy life the same way. They don't have the same motivation, the same drive. Once they come to us and we put them on the right treatment, two to three months later, it's a different guy. They have more vitality, more zest for life, more enthusiasm. Their depression is, is much better. You know, in our clinic, we've already been successful at taking guys off of their depression medication. Yes. We have more than 50 patients who came to us with symptoms of depression and we're able to treat them with the right treatment, including testosterone, and they worked with their psychiatrists, obviously, but they were able to come off the medication. Yeah. Isn't that a win-win win situation? It's amazing. What should people do? So if they're feeling these symptoms and they're feeling the low quality uh, life, what, what should they do? What's their first step? Well, the most important thing, and this is why we're doing this, as a patient, as a consumer, you need to educate yourself. 
If you feel those symptoms, don't take no for an answer. Find the right physician. Actually, on our website, you will find a link that, where, that you can download and you can see what questions you want to ask your physician to see if he can treat you accordingly. Unfortunately, not every physician has kept up with this literature and is able to really assess you the right way and help you. So again, don't take no for an answer. If you have those symptoms, keep looking. Um, again, those symptoms can be also very non-specific. It could be a thyroid problem. It could be sleep apnea. Um, I keep a very broad differential diagnosis when I see my patients. I've diagnosed patients with many different other conditions, but low T or testosterone deficiency is a real cause of a lot of those symptoms. So don't take no for an answer. Educate yourself. Look for the right physician, but you can feel better. Doc, thank you so much for your time, your knowledge, and your insight. You're a blessing to us. For those of you watching, if you have any further questions, be sure to click on the link below or give us a call and we'll get you started. For now, stay healthy and God bless.